microchips, macro problems. Now, microchips are on pretty much every item you can think of, from trucks to PlayStation 5s to, if you're on the dark side of the internet, the vaccines. Now, unfortunately, demand for these chips is currently outpacing production, creating quite the bottleneck. Now, this is a problem for people who like to buy, sell, or organize anything running on power. The Amish, though, well, they're thriving. Doubt they found this video, though. So what's happening, and how is America working to solve this problem? Well, first, what is a microchip? Well, it's essentially the brains of the whole operation. I say, the Roomba should be moving forward. Let me call my people over at the battery and put them in contact with the engines running the wheels. Forward ho! Now it's basically the difference between an electronic device and a rechargeable paperweight. Here's the rub. While you'd think that these shrunken brains must be incredibly expensive, they really can't be if you want to have profitable consumer electronics at an affordable price. So where do you go if you want to manufacture millions upon millions of incredibly cheap yet labor intensive microchips? Hint, not America. Enter Taiwan, the manufacturer of 90% of the world's advanced microchips. Now, the shift from companies manufacturing chips in-house to outsourcing chip manufacturing to a few third-party companies led to a massive disconnect that is now causing this bottleneck. Instead of the decentralized loosey-goosey, eh, you can't make the chips, we'll all go to that guy manufacturing process of the previous decades, today half of these chips are manufactured by three companies. If something goes wrong with those companies, get ready to exchange that broken laptop for an abacus. Now this bottleneck was caused by not a lack of supply, but rather a huge jump in demand. During the course of the previous year, everyone was told that they were going to be stuck in their home indefinitely, and then given a large sum of cash. If ever there was a good time to upgrade my electronics and buy a new car, it's now. Problem is that there were so few suppliers, there wasn't much wiggle room to adjust for demand shocks. The major chip manufacturers were already running their factories 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, so not much adjustment possible there. Suddenly throwing a bunch of new orders on top of that would be like dropping a barrel of water into a full bath and then getting frustrated when the bath didn't expand to prevent overflowing. It takes years and billions of dollars in investment to build new chip facilities, so it looks like we're stuck with a relatively inelastic supply for the next few years. Now, Because of this squeeze, an interesting implicit priority system has emerged for who gets to be at the front of the line for new chips. Not all chips are created equal. You can sell the chip that makes an iPhone work for a lot more than the chip that makes an airbag deploy in a collision. Now, Because of this, chip manufacturers compounded the pressure on the auto industry by rejiggering their factory lines to better serve the consumer electronics market, which generates far more revenue for them than autos. So everyone here is feeling the burn, but it's especially fiery for the car companies, where a lack of chips are really sending production back to the mid 1950s. Eh, no airbags, no power steering or brakes, and crank those windows. But we added two ashtrays per cup holder. Huh? Car manufacturing has taken a huge hit because of this. So this brings us to the fun part of the episode. The solutions. Now these come in two forms. Oh god, we don't have enough chips to make it through the next week. What do we do? And the longer term, okay, how do we prevent this from happening again a few years out? For immediate solutions, we turn to Biden's Commerce Secretary, Gina Raimundo. America is currently circling the wagons and trying to rally the few domestic chip manufacturers still around while boosting chip imports as much as possible. Now this whole thing has led to a tricky question. Cars are made in America. Phones are made in China. Should the federal government be intervening in domestic chip manufacturing to sort of steer things towards our automobile industry? Ford certainly thinks so. The president of the Automotive Policy Council made the argument that 
When you can't assemble a vehicle in the United States because you're missing a handful of semiconductors, that is an entirely different impact on the economy than the ability to put together a consumer electronic device in Asia. Now on the other side of that coin, you have chip and consumer electronics manufacturers saying, whoa, 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 free market baby, no preferential treatment for cars, pay to play. The log jams have caused supply chain disruptions and production warnings across the entire economy, from consumer electronics to medical devices to computer hardware and graphics chips. Why should automakers get to jump in the queue over all of these other customers? Now, in the end, Commerce Secretary Raimundo cited other chip users dealing with the crunch, including electronics and medical device makers, in her decision to not give the automobile industry any special treatment in chip purchasing. Certainly must have made that recent Ford visit a bit more awkward. We love our made in America F-150s, don't we? Hey. So now to the other more long term solution. Instead of the difficult question of where to allocate limited resources, it's the more fun question of where do we back up this dump truck full of gash? No bunch of nations are taking notes during this surprise vulnerability and making moves to re-engage domestic manufacturing over the next few years. China, for example, is really swinging for the fences with their most recent 5 year plan. They're attempting to be completely independent of foreign chip imports in the next 5 years. That either means that they're going to be building a bunch of specialized factories or look out Taiwan. No on the American front thinks there are a little more tax breaks and free market. Microchip factories are incredibly expensive and complex ventures. So the goal domestically is to offset some of those costs for entrepreneurs and companies and get them building factories on their own fruition. We're talking a tax credit that lets companies write off 40% of manufacturing and equipment costs for chip factories. I know, not exactly reinventing the wheel here. $10 billion in federal funds to match incentives offered by local governments. Basically, if a state is offering a grant or incentive for opening up a chip plant, Uncle Sam might give Silicon Valley the old, huh, there's something behind your ear. Oh, it's matching funds. Keep up the good work. And lastly, it would dedicate $12 billion to research and development of better microchips for the future. That bill, with bipartisan support, is quietly passing through Congress as we speak. So that's all I can imagine anyone would want to know about the past, present, and future of this current chip shortage. With all these countries trying to develop their own manufacturing, there are going to be lots of chips out there in a few years. Until next time, thank you and that's all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube, I'd like to thank my patrons over here for helping me put out my videos. If you want to support independent nonpartisan news looking into the overlooked, click on the link in the description to join this group of magnificent individuals. Like, subscribe, and do all that other fun YouTube stuff. And lastly, as always, thank you for watching.